Okay, they want us to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Now they're gonna be giving you a picture on the test that's gonna be provided something like this. There's not gonna be any bearings, so you don't have to do any bearings on there. But it's gonna give you something like that where they give you the angles and everything is all drawn out. What you wanna do with the drawing is you wanna change this into component form. We have one for F1 and one for F2. For F1, the way you convert that is you gotta take the magnitude and multiply it for the I component. You're working with a cosine. For the J component, you have a sine. So this is gonna be, you're gonna do 40 and you're gonna do cosine 30 degrees, and that's the I, plus 40 sine 30 degrees, and that's gonna be J. We're gonna do the same thing for F2. That force is 60, that's the magnitude of that one. 60, you're gonna do cosine negative 45. I plus 60 sine negative 45, don't forget that negative, very important. And that's gonna be J, okay? Now that we've had this set up, you wanna change all these into decimals. Now even though these are values that come off of your unit circle, you don't need to worry about using exact values here because ultimately you wanna get a decimal answer for your magnitude of, of the result in any way. So for this, we're just going to change all those into decimals. So we'll put those into the, into the calculator and when you do, this is what you're gonna get. 34.64 I, and then plus 20 J. For F2, if you put that in your calculator with the negative, 42.43 I minus 42.43 J. Okay, so there's a minus that you end up with on that one. To get the resultant, you're gonna add both of these together, F1 plus F2. That's your resultant. We're gonna add the I's and add the J's together. If you add the I's, 77.07 I minus 22.43 J when you add that together here. So we added these and these together and this is the result that we got, okay? This is the one that we're gonna get our answer with now that we have the resultant. We wanna find the magnitude and direction of the resultant. So uh, first, let's do the magnitude. We'll do that over here. So magnitude of F1 plus F2 is gonna be the square root of 77.07 squared minus, or plus rather, negative 22.43 squared. Okay, so we're doing that, that formula, magnitude formula, square each of the components. We're gonna do that in our calculator. Okay, when you put that all into your calculator, uh, and take the square root, we'll do, it. we'll do it all to get the final answer, 80.27, that'll be Newtons, that matches the same unit of force from the other ones. Now we wanna find the angle. Your theta is the inverse tangent formula. We have to determine which quadrant it's in. Now if you take a look at these two numbers here, a positive x value, so positive x, and a negative y value, so positive x and negative y, that means you're gonna be in the fourth quadrant. So if you think of that as a, as a point to plot, it ends up in the fourth quadrant. So because it is in the fourth quadrant, we're gonna use the inverse tangent formula, but we're, we don't have to add the 180 to it because you're in the fourth quadrant. One and four, you don't need to add the 180. Okay, we're gonna do the y value over the x value. And again, when we do that in the calculator, negative 16.2 two, three degrees, that's gonna be your direction. So magnitude is 80.27 Newtons. And this, you don't have to do any more to that. You don't have to add 90, do anything else. That would be your final answer in, uh, that's your degrees, that's what you would put down for the direction. So put that in the calculator, make sure you put parentheses around the whole thing so your calculator does the, the correct operation, but you should end up with this as a result.